really excited about this Bantamweight debut for the Philippines. We have Mark Mugen Striegel, Matt. We were really anticipating his UFC debut. The video is out there. You can check it back in the Fight Name Picks catalog. We're supposed to be taking on Timor Valiev. And excited for a lot of different reasons. I mean, for Mark Striegel, out of his 18 total wins, 14 of them by submission. This guy's a Sambo expert. He's meddled in some of the events uh, in the South Asian market. And a guy that you can get really excited about because he's faced really good competition on the regional scene. It's not often you see a fighter with this kind of record just kind of jumping into the UFC. There is one fighter that we have seen recently in Czech Republic's David Dvorak, but it, that doesn't happen very often. So for Mark Striegel, all of those submission wins. He has a submission win from about uh, four or five years ago over Kai Kara France on the regional scene. He also has a no contest uh, on his record against former UFC talent Sunichi Shimizu in his last fight. It was a low blow. The fight got called off. That's the one no contest. So for Mark Striegel, you know what you're going to get basically in terms of grappling. And if you go back and watch some of his fights, really, really sneaky takedowns. And once he's on top, he can really control a lot of his opponents. I will say you don't often see a lot of 32-year-olds making their uh, UFC debuts maybe sure. this late in their careers. And the reason why that fight against Timur Valia fell out, Striegel tested positive to COVID-19. So a little bit of a delay into his UFC debut. Now, maybe he could have got the win over Timur Valia. Sure. He was a pretty big underdog in that one going into it. He's also a huge underdog coming into this one, which is a bit of a head-scratcher, taking on Russia's Syed Nurmagomedov and Matt from what we've seen from Nurmagomedov, split decision win over Justin Scoggins. Then he knocks Ricardo Hamos' head completely off. And then he has a loss to Howney Barcelos. And I mean, Howney, big fan. Wish we get to see him fight a lot more. Former uh, LFA, RFA champ before he came into the UFC. And a really tidy record on his part. But Syed Nurmagomedov definitely didn't have his best day that time out. So... It's been a little while since we've seen Syed Nurmagomedov, about nine months. For Mark Striegel, we haven't seen him in almost a year and a half since that no contest. So it's a little bit of a tale of the unknowns, but the thing that kind of, I wouldn't say rubs me the wrong way, but it's the fact that Syed Nurmagomedov, in his first few fights, in the Scoggins fight, he was a slight favorite. In the Hamos fight, again, we're talking, you know, plus 160 in around there, something like that. And in the Barcellos fight, around there. So we're hovering around par, a little bit above, a little bit below. Sired Nurmagomedov is a more than 4-1 to one favorite in this fight. It's a, a total head-scratcher. I know everybody sees this fight for Nurmagomedov, but it is a pass from me. Matt, it should be an interesting fight. I think it's more... Uh, competitive than some of the numbers might show you. What do you think about this? One? Uh, well, it definitely is more competitive than a four to one favor for Nurmagomedov Medov because Nurmagomedov Medov hasn't given us a reason to really give him those odds. Because you got to think the uh, uh, Ricardo Hamos fight. I was really excited for that fight going into it because Nurmagomedov Medov coming out of the Scoggins win. Yes, it was a win, but it is hard to look good against a guy like Justin Scoggins. He moves around so much. He's really wonky. So okay, a split decision win over him, not the end of the world. But Hamos, I think everyone kind of realizes he's good on the feet. He's good on the ground. He's a legit talent at 135. And for Nurmagomedov Medov to go out there and kind of beat him with his own techniques, throw what Nick Diaz affectionately calls spinning shit, and hits him with that spinning back kick to the body. It was really the beginning of the end from there. And Nurmagomedov, Medov, the nice thing is his footwork too. He's good at jumping in. He kind of has not really a blitz style like a Wonder Boy Thompson, but he will kind of blitz in, throw his combination, then jump out really quick. And you like that too because defensively he is quite sound. This fight's going to be interesting. Because there's so many unknowns around Mark Striegel, really. Because his Samba, will he be able to take down Said Nurmagomedov? And that's not the only question. Will he be able to hold him down? Because Nurmagomedov's good in that initial scramble, but if you are a big, strong enough grappler, you can kind of hold him down. So if Striegel is able to start initiating some of his wrestling, I do think he can have some success, even though he is up like plus 360, which is wild to me. But it's a good fight, I do think, for Striegel for his UFC debut. Nurmagomedov, he's been out for a little bit. And again, we don't really know where his ceiling's at right now. So Striegel can come in as a massive underdog, pick up a win. I mean, it, not that it puts a rocket to his back, but it's going to shoot him up those rankings quite a bit and really get his name out there in the public. And we've seen pure grapplers come in. They're underdogs. We picked them. This has happened twice, and it's actually been a women's bantamweight recently with Stephanie Egger and Sarah Alpar, where we were going off with pure grappling acumen. With Alpar, it was a wrestling. With Egger, it was the judo. With Striegel, it's the sambo. So if we go out there and pick Striegel, I know a lot of people are going to hate on the pick, but 
I could see somebody picking Mark Striegel. Now, we look at the Tapology picks so far. So to 705 total uh, predictions on Tapology, 89% going with Nurmagomedov, 76% saying he's going to win by decision. If you look at the odds again, Sayer Nurmagomedov open a minus 365 favorite. He's now a minus 428 average. And for Mark Striegel, he opened at a plus 300. He's now a plus 323. So it's really surprising to me, based off of what we've seen from Mark Striegel, taking on decent regional competition. Yeah, he's lost two fights, but he's also won 18 of them. And it hasn't been against terrible competition. I mean, one of the losses was to Reese McLaren. And if you've seen him competing with one championship, they're not just giving him the easy fights. Like, Reese McLaren's a pretty good fighter. So to lose to a guy like that, I'm fine with it. Am I going to side with Syed Nurmagomedov? I do like him. I mean, he is quite well-rounded. I do worry about maybe some periods of inactivity. And if he's getting taken down and held down, oh boy, I'm worrying. So for me, overall, this is a pass. I'll take Syed Nurmagomedov, but there's a lot of upside in Mark Striegel. I really can't add much more to that analysis. I am going to pick Nurmagomedov. Just, I like the versatility of his game because if Striegel can't get the takedowns, I think it's safe to assume Nurmagomedov can win the exchanges on the feet. So it really comes down to, can Mark Striegel take and hold Syed Nurmagomedov down? I think he will have success throughout the fight. I just don't really see the control element from him in this one. So I'm also going to pick Nurmagomedov in this. Matt, really looking forward to this fight. We've got a great main event between Chan Sung Jung, the Korean Zombie taking on Brian T. City Ortega. You're going to want to keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt. And as we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.